Welcome. So now we have our first conservation law, energy. And we want to think about when we can use this conservation law, because we can't use it all the time. So our first clarification is that when we say energy, we actually mean mechanical energy for this class, for this semester. Mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy. We can talk about other forms of energy, certainly. But for energy conservation for this class, this is what we want to do. So when is mechanical energy conserved? Well, we can find this out by going with our interaction diagrams. So there's a reason that we learned about interaction diagrams all through forces. They turn out to be very, very useful. So again, an example of our interaction diagram is we're going to have some number of objects. And we're going to have some number of interactions between them. Maybe something like this. So in our interaction diagrams, then we have to define a system. And so here are two potential systems that we could define. We could define a system that is maybe just this one object. Or we could define a system that is maybe all three objects. Both of these are choices, and which choices we choose will determine whether or not we uh, conserve energy every single time. So what we're doing in this is that we're then looking at the interactions. So these interactions in this orangish yellow. And we have interactions that conserve mechanical energy. So this would be gravity, where the potential energy from gravity is mgh. We have springs, where the potential energy from springs is 1 half kx squared. We have the normal force, where we found that the potential energy from the normal force is 0. We have a lot of others in our future classes. But for now, right, these are the interactions that conserve mechanical energy that we know about. Another important thing is to think about interactions that do not conserve mechanical energy. So interactions that do not conserve mechanical energy are things like friction, drag, a lot of contact forces. Any time two objects are pushing against each other, we can't be ensured that they conserve energy. Um, and then right, any other kind of loss of forces. So how we then determine right, whether something conserves energy is if any interactions inside or going into the system do not conserve energy. And by energy, we mean mechanical energy. Then our problem, our system, does not conserve mechanical energy. So one possible issue is that right, if we choose a very, very large system, then one of these two interactions might not conserve energy. But if we choose a smaller system, then we only have to work at this interaction that may or may not conserve energy. So this is determining that if our energy is conserved, that's what we have. Then we have, right, if our mechanical energy is conserved, we get the sum of the k's initial 
plus the sum of the u's initial is equal to the sum of the k's final plus the sum of the u's final. So when we say sum of the k's, we mean, right, a k for each object in the system. And when we say sum of the u's, we mean the u, which is potential energy, for each interaction. in the system. And we will go over right, examples of this in the next video. But if our mechanical energy is not conserved, then we have to use a slightly uglier example. So we still have the sum of kinetic energies and the sum of potential energies. But then if we have other interactions, we can either treat them as external works on this side, so that's very often contact forces, or we can treat them as the change in thermal energy that we go from mechanical energy into thermal energy. Now, if we don't know our external work, if we don't know the change in thermal energy, which very often we don't, then we're in a lot of trouble. And so often, we should use a different framework if mechanical energy is not conserved. So this is how we understand, right, our energy finding an interaction diagram and a system within that interaction diagram of what to look at. And then as we look at what we look at, we track what's in our system, we track the interactions inside and going through the system, and then uh, we want to look at all that. <laughs>